Coming Out. This is a game that is based on the same game system that you may have encountered in Stuffed Fables. It is an adventure book game. That is, the board is not a single board, comes in, uh, in the form of a book, a uh, large glossy book, on the, and when you open it, on the left page you will have the board, a playable area, and on the right page you will have instructions So what happens in the different areas as you, as you travel with your game pieces. And then you will read certain spaces and it will trigger certain content described on the right side, and they'll tell you, well, now travel to page 58, and then you travel there and you set up the new board, you reach a new place, you discover new things, etc, etc. I thought I had invented that system. Not really. A couple of years ago, I was playing a game in the Fire Emblem system, and I thought, would it be great, after playing that video game, if we had a board game that does that, but we would need multiple maps and multiple mini-games, and I was planning at some point one day to design something like that. So they preceded me and that's fine. On the plus side, I can play these games and I have to design them. Coming out. So Common Out has this idea of exploring different areas, exploring different places. As for, the th as for the theme, Inception. The movie Inception. This is pretty much Inception, the board game. We are traveling here in the mind of a famous scientist that is in a coma. We need to identify and defeat the inner demons that are preventing the scientist from, uh, from waking up. We need to do it before the body of the scientist collapses, and if we don't wake up the scientist, of course, it's gonna be the end of the world. What else? Right? I mean, that's these days, it seems that a narrative needs to have that kind of stake for, for it to be interesting. So, we are traveling and we become different avatars in the mind of, this, of the scientists. And we're traveling to different areas that represent different aspects of, of, of his psyche memories, dreams, games that he played, etc, etc, etc. It's really an interesting premise and one, of course, that has a lot of creative possibilities because you're not bound to a single fantasy, sci-fi or realistic setting. You Each set can be as diverging from the previous ones as one can possibly imagine because it is all in your imagination or in the guy's imagination. I like the premise very much. Now, one caveat uh, that uh, applies to this game as it applies to any game with a strong narrative. Games these days have learned to tell us stories in ways that seem to be unthinkable until 15, 20 years ago. Now we have games that tell us stories with plot twists, with new elements introduced mid-game, with campaigns so that the different games are string together into a larger, more epic, controversial narrative. The price to pay is always replayability, meaning after a couple of times that you play the game, you can still play the game, go through the steps, go through the motions, but of course, by definition, the plot twists are not there anymore, the surprises, you have discovered them. That is something that is typical in fiction, we know that you, can't play, you cannot read a book infinite times, even your favorite books are not likely to read them more than 15-20 times in your life, and that would be a lot. But we used to expect to be able to play a game maybe 15, 20 times. With these games, the magic is bound to dissolve after, after you've discovered the secrets. And there are games that do that differently. They have different degrees of longevity. Say, Pandemic, Legacy, well, you discover the campaign, you can in fact play 15, 20 times and still discover new things. Common Arts, and I can anticipate a little bit of my, of my conclusions here, is a game that will decay particularly fast. As a dice game, which at the core it is, you can play it until you're old, and maybe even after that, if you believe in the afterlife and this is the game you're gonna bring with you past the, the, the shiny gates. Mm, but the narrative element will decay pretty fast. By the second, third time, you're gonna know a lot of the things that will happen here. And so it's gonna be a narrative game that will turn into a dice game rather fast. But maybe I've anticipated already too much of my conclusions. So let me show you how the game works before I give you too many spoilers here. 
Players in the game will control avatars. The position of your avatar will be represented on a board by a standee such as this one. Then you will have a card telling you about your basic abilities, some bonuses that you may have, for example when rolling certain dice, a clarity ability that is an ability that you can trigger by spending clarity tokens, and possibly other things here such as starting equipment and zones where your character will be seen as suspicious. Speaking of equipment, you have a <clears throat> generous collection of cards representing different things that the players may start with and or equip as the game progresses. You have miscellaneous things such as Venom, Cowboy Hat, I mean who would ever want to go on an adventure without those, melee weapons, range weapons and armor. So you will get some of these at the beginning and or as the game continues. You have here a play area where you organize some of your materials including your character's card. Here you have a space where you place your clarity tokens like, like these ones. Then you have an area where you can store a die and you will have a number of life points when you take a hit you lose one, when you go down to zero, you disappear like, as an avatar from the dream world of the story. You'll be able to respawn later, but of course that means that there is a penalty in terms of opportunity, timing and things like that. During the game you will be hunting IDs, inner demons. So there is a number of inner demons that represent the different psychological burdens that are affecting the doctor. You will travel through different zones of the doctor's mind looking for these ones. In each game you will select five of them randomly and then one of them will be designed uh, as the prime, as the big, the big boss, as the prime ID, as the final boss. You don't know which one it will be so you will have to travel, travel through areas, so defeat the other ones and look for the big boss. You may, you may collect clues as you go which will simplify your, your quest and will make it easier to find the final ID or simply you defeat everybody else and the last one will be the big boss that you are that you are fighting. So we have five, pri five inner demons and they correspond to five different areas and there will be again a number of areas. So five of them will be available each turn. As you can see they correspond to various locations, real or imaginary connected to the mental life of our doctor. For example, Hate Spire has pretty much the mental embodiment of a D&D campaign that he played when he was younger. And then we have other areas here. Each area it corresponds to a number which tells you where you find the maps connected to that area in the main book. This book is well both an adventure book and really the board of the game or a collection of boards. When you enter a new area, say area 8 stars edge, then you simply go through the book looking for the section that has that number there, 8 in this case, and this simply represents us entering this area. Read the description of the area, then you turn to the next page. The game is pretty much organized as a series of mini games. You will place your avatars in an area of the board that you just saw, indicated in the description. Then you will set up the board accordingly by placing different tokens, different things, and sometimes the setup can be a little bit elaborate. Each mini game will have special rules so that you simply have to take into account. And then basically you will travel from space to space, as you can see, spaces are divided by these lines. And dotted lines are easier to move through color lines, like I don't know if you can see that that one is green, for example. A little more complicated because they require specific dice of the same color to move through dotted lines you can move through by using any die as you will see soon. So you travel around and you will interact with the different spaces that you find. 
As you can see, there are symbols here and each map is paired with a system of paragraphs. Don't look too close if you don't want to have spoilers, but basically the idea is like, you know, choose your own adventure book, you enter a space, you see a symbol, then you move to the other page and you read the corresponding text that may activate encounters, may give you choices, may just be a flavor text that doesn't really add much from the point of view of gameplay. You just don't know what's gonna happen, at least the first time that you go through the adventure. Because the second time in a later game that you go through the same map, then you will know, you will remember easily what happened and what is the easiest way to get uh, where, where you need to go. Basically, you will need to complete the objectives of this mini game. then you will be told if you do so, how to advance and maybe you enter another area. And you set it up again, replenish, complete that one, and you continue to travel. At a certain point, hopefully you will find the ID, the inner demon on that area, and then you'll move to the next one. Suppose after we complete uh, Star's Edge, we want to move to the Omega, Omega League area, which is the number three, and then inspired by comic books, and we repeat the procedure. Read the introduction, go to the first map, and and so on and so forth. Now, how do we move through areas and how do we do things? Basically by using dice. This is a dice game at its core with a lot of different things going on, but ultimately you are manipulating sets of dice and optimizing your chances of getting the results that you want. When it is your turn, suppose this is Bridget's turn, you draw five dice from the back. Oh, that was exactly five. And dice are of many different colors. And then you resolve the dice that you drew in a specific order. Suppose that these are the dice that I drew. First you resolve white dice. White dice will allow you to acquire clarity tokens that, as you may remember, will give you uh, special abilities and also will give you rerolls. A core idea when you're rolling dice in this game is you can choose if you have multiple dice of a color to roll them individually and look at the results individually or to roll any number of them together and to total the results. The advantage to uh, succeed in your tasks, usually you need to roll equal to or higher than a certain result. That means that if I have a high number, so I'm trying to meet a six, meet or exceed a six, well, probably want to roll multiple dice together and add them together. If I'm trying to beat a reasonable number, say four, then I may decide to roll dice individually, hoping to get multiple successes in case I roll four or higher on multiple dice. When you get white dice, they're the first ones that you resolve, uh, you roll individually or together, each result that you roll, which is equal to or higher than the number of clarity tokens that you already have, will give you a new clarity token in your personal supply. Then the black dice. Black dice, some have red pips, some have white pips, but the general idea is that they represent mounting threats. There is a board here they will place next to uh, the adventure book. They will tell you the situation is safe if there are no hostiles on the board or hostiles if there are enemies on the board. When you get a black die for the time being, you simply place the dice in that in, in these slots here. Later, there will be enemy cards that will be placed here and if there is a number of black dice equal to or higher than the enemies available, then the enemies will activate, they will take a turn. After you resolved white and or black dice, you may have drawn the translucent die, which will activate Dr. Martin's inner child. You place it on the board, different things may happen. And also, when a, that happens, you will draw a card from this deck here. This deck tells you how the guy is going. Uh, how he's doing. The cards may tell you that he's stable, that he's critical, bad stuff happens, and basically this is the timer of the game. You need to locate the prime inner demon and defeat the inner demon before you draw the flatline card which will be shuffled towards the bottom of the deck. Finally, 
you will finally get to use the other dice if you have any four actions and these aren't the um, the basic action dice that you will actually spend to perform actions. The purple die is a wild, you can use it to replace any of the other four action dice. Generally speaking, red dice will be used specifically for melee combat, green dice for range attacks and agility based tasks, yellow for searching or smart based tasks, and blue for resistance based tasks. You can spend the dice that you have in a, in a variety of ways. There's a lot of flexibility. You can spend a die, any die, regardless of color, to move through a dotted line. You can also uh, discard any two dice of any color to get a die of another color from the discard pool, that is, dice that have been discarded earlier. You may choose to save a die. You save a die that you maybe don't need this time and you put it on your mat and simply you can use it another time. You may also choose to give a die to another player, then you simply place it on their mat as if it was your own. And then you can use dice to, well, to, com to complete specific tasks, so challenges that will be given here to you. Sometimes it's a single die roll, maybe it's a group task, then you will take multiple dice that will be placed on the group task. Say you're completing a group task with a difficulty of 18, then you simply need to roll dice of the appropriate color until the total plays on that track meets or exceeds the difficulty of the group task. Um, for combat, well, you roll red dice if you're in the same space with an hostile, green dice if you are shooting from another space and you're trying to meet or exceed the defense value of the enemy, in which case you defeat the enemy unless it is a boss, then in which case you simply remove a health point of the big boss. Uh, this would be pretty much the general idea, uh, just to show you how the enemies act when they are activated. Enemies, as we said, will have a card, the cards there, I'm getting random cards, trying to reduce as much as possible. The, the spoiler danger of this video, when you activate an enemy because they're taking a turn, then simply for each enemy you will roll a die, of course the enemies will be represented on the board, like so. For each enemy you will roll a die and then you simply see the range in which the result falls will tell you the action of the, of the enemy. This is movement, the enemy may not move or move a number of spaces, this is the range of the attack and this is the strength of the attack. The enemies usually will try to attack the heroes. When you're the target of an attack, if you do not have any dice store on your mat, then uh, nothing that you can do, you cannot defend, you will take a hit. If there is a die, you may choose, choose to spend to defend. If you have a die, you may still choose not to defend and take a hit automatically. If you choose to defend, you roll the die on your mat and you need to roll equal to or higher than the strength of the attack to be able to dodge the attack, otherwise you take a hit as normal. And this is pretty much how you, how you complete or how you resolve combat. And this in general is how you play common outs. By the way, I said in the introduction that I was going to give you spoilers. I didn't want to give you spoilers. I'm not going to give you spoilers. This is a spoiler-free review. I'm not going to tell you about the exact secrets that are to be discovered, but I can tell you that you'll find them out fairly easily. Um, the point that I was making in the introduction that I introduced then is this. In the game, you mix and match the different locations that you will discover. That means that starting from the second game, some of the locations you already know. And each location is fairly scripted. Maybe you have two ways to go about things. But once you discover why, for example, uh, our scientist has certain feelings for a certain situation, what caused that, that is, well, they already know that, so that magic is gone. Procedurally, also, you will figure out what is the best way to go from A to B and how to navigate a certain, a certain world, imaginary world, how to uh, walk around a certain obstacle, how to collect resources, to defeat a certain monster, etc, etc, etc. Say, with games like Pandemic Legacy, in 
scenario 12, 13, 15, I'm still discovering legitimately new things. Here, uh, and actually those new things probably will present me with new game challenges. Here the problem is that after you play it a couple of times, you're gonna know some of the landscapes, which means you're gonna have uh, not a narrative surprise anymore, and the game challenge also decreases because then you already know how to navigate it from the point of view of gameplay. So there are legacy style games, or in any case narrative games, uh, scenario based games, in which each new step adds new content and adds new challenges. Here the opposite is true as in fact both the surprises from the point of view of the theme and uh, the problems to analyze in exquisitely uh, game terms are going to decrease and decay, and decay very fast. And so what you have here then is a dice game which feels overproduced. Now mind you, let me clarify this, as a dice game, I like it. I like it's a, it has smart ways in which you handle the pool of dice, in which um, you, can tr you can save dice for certain tasks, you can trade dice, in which uh, certain, the bad dice will activate certain bad effects, but in a way that is very self-regulating, as interesting uh, self-balancing mechanism. I think it makes for a fun dice game um, along the lines of games such as, you know, Elder Sign. But Elder Sign still gives me enough of a story, um, but it doesn't take me 20 minutes to set up, for example, it's not a big box, it's not a big production. There's a ton of components in here, which is great, but it also means extra time and extra effort to sort them out, set them up, put them back in the box, etc, etc, etc. It is a big production for what, after a couple of, couple of times that you play, it becomes uh, Elder Sign, the uh, magnified version of Elder Sign. Um, and at that point, I feel like, well, if it is a dice game, ultimately, I'm trying to figure out, should I use two dice of this kind, trade this die for that, da, 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 da. then there are just other games that do that without all of the logistical uh, complexities. While the story last is good, while the story last it was surprising, actually the fact that we're going to different mental landscapes that had nothing to do with one another, from the far west to sci-fi to fantasy to realistic, etc, 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 I was great. Actually, the surprise was all the most powerful precisely because um, it's a multi-genre game. It's almost like really and truly different genres. Lots of surprises, different encounters, different situations. But after that, after that, uh, you have a dice game, which is just cumbersome to play. So pretty much this is my assessment for common ads. I like the, the engine, the dice engine is strong throughout the experience. Um, I like the story, but uh, I don't know how you could do it in ways that would rejuvenate the story. One thing I guess could be, uh, of course we take a lot of design, uh, to have expansions in which you don't even necessarily need to buy a new game, but say, for fairly cheap, they give you files uh, that simply change the text. Ma the maps are the same, but now you use the other text uh, associated with the same map and now the map does different things. The map tells you different stories and you know they could release that. Maybe it could be fan expansions. I think there are ways of doing that. That would be great. As is the game uh, after a couple of times that you played has uh, has lost its magic in terms of the story and has become a dice game that as I said is just a little cumbersome to play and probably as a dice game not my first option for, for a game of this kind to play with my friends. Come on out. It's fun while it lasts.